Hey, and welcome back to another cool tool show and tell. Today, my guest is Paulo Coleman. Paulo is a woodworker and a builder based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. He specializes in reusing old material and applying historical and cross-cultural tools and techniques. Paulo, what'd you bring to show us today? I brought a measuring tool because I think that's the most important thing in any shop or to start any project. And this one, I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it. Xinhua is the company. They make these. They're framing squares made in Japan. They have both uh, inches and centimeters on it, or depending on where you're from. And they do some very unusual things compared to American framing squares. All right. Now, it looks a little like more fragile almost than a, the, the framing squares I'm used to seeing that are a little wider. Uh, is that useful for a particular t- type of measurement or a particular application? Very much so. Uh, when you're doing uh, framing work, especially on post and beam, to be able to lend, uh, lay it over and have it complete the line accurately but be able to bend because the pieces might be in a little different of an angle is wonderful. It is uh, hardened stainless steel. And then a very unusual aspect of this is if you get in close, it thickens in the corner there. Wow. So this allows me to go into tight spots. I can go into a window well and kind of bend it into place. This always stays square and straight and allows it to bend, but it never bends the other way because of the construction design. It's so it's got like a curvature to it that kind of prevents it from, uh, yeah, from bending it, the opposite it, it, direction? Yep, uh, and it's also the way that it's made. It, it thickens at one point. Yeah. So the flex is only here, but never the other way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Very cool. And so now the uh, the two different measurements uh, means you have to kind of flip it in another orientation. Does that distract from how you're you'd be using it, or is it still it useful? It does either? in one sense. Yeah, I would say yes. It can be a little bit annoying uh, if you're running just stainless uh, inches mm. or just centimeters. Mm. I like the option of doing both. So if you are just doing one, I say stick with that. That way you have the reverse on each side when you're working with insight. So you might want to, you have a beam in front of you and you want to cut this way, you lay it down that way. You can also roll it over the other side, drop it on the other side of the beam and bring it in and measure from there. And that's a... yeah, is one side a little thicker than the other side too, or is I, I know that there's thicker that one at the where the joint where they meet, but is the uh, is one leg thicker than the other? No, nope, yeah. it's just this area right here. Yeah, this is only hard point here that doesn't really bend. Yeah, very cool. And then in, in, when you're storing that in the shop, it gets, can you just uh, hang it on a nail, or how how do you kind of keep that? Hang from... it on a nail, toss it. I put it in a toolbox and put. 30, 40 pounds on it, and then went in and gone, oh, no, (laughs) and pulled everything out, and it just goes, bing, right back to where it needs to be. So it's very flexible and strong in that sense. Yeah. It's also uh, very nice for running a marking line if you're somebody who uses knives to mark out your work instead of pencils. Mm. Is there a, a, a bevel to it, too? I'm trying to I'm, – I'm looking at it. It looks a little like it is – from the shine, it looks like maybe it's tapered a little bit at the edges. It is, and it's almost impossible to see unless you had a – like yeah, you no, were I, looking at a person. I, right I, in the middle, it bevels in like old school rulers. Yeah. Uh, not on the bo- – I mean, it, and it does it on both sides, so it's a little thinner right down the middle. And then it tapers in. This is thicker here going along by a little bit and it tapers in just right there before the, it thickens again. Yeah. And I think that is the design that allows it to be flexible yet strong. Very cool. And then how, how did you discover it? It seems like an unusual tool to come across. I've not, not seen one before. What was your, your first introduction to it? I was doing a lot of uh, post and beam work and I needed a tool that uh, I could use that way. And I noticed one of these uh, companies that sells products for post and beam was listing this. And I was surprised because there's a uh, woodworking store in Berkeley, California, I go to all the time and they carry this. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. once I got it, 
I actually started using it in my shop much more than other tools that I had paid a lot more for. Yeah. So I have I paid for the wonderful but expensive woodpecker um, marking gauges, and they're precise, they're amazing, but this is fast. And when you're in a space and you want to get production done, you want to be faster. Yeah. So I I almost use this all the time. The only time I don't use this is when I need distance, and then I'll go to a tape measure. Yeah. Great. Well, that's a great recommendation. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to show it here. Where can people uh, find more of your work or, 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 or learn about what you're up to? Uh, only spot really is uh, paulocoleman.com, mm-hmm. just my name, P-A-L-O-C-O-L-E-M-A-N. And it's a very wonky website, but I do put up stuff on the DIY uh, videos I like, and eventually I'll be posting stuff more of techniques that are out there. I tend to go down the rabbit hole with unusual techniques and uh, sit there and find out if they're better than what we have now or if they're in the past for a reason. Right. Great. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Talk to you soon. Thank you.